Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yosha Hawkins. Well, in the news this week, Pope Francis makes divorce easier for Catholics, and Russia and the U.S. might be meeting up in the skies above Syria. We'll have those stories along with others, including the terrible situation of thousands of refugees fleeing their war-torn countries. But first, we're going to start off with an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. An inmate at San Quentin Prison was diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease and dozens of others are showing symptoms. Now, caused by bacteria found in water systems, Legionnaire's is a severe form of pneumonia. The inmate is being treated in a hospital outside the facility. Now, the water at San Quentin has been shut off since the outbreak and will remain off until the cause of the disease is located. Now, currently there are over 3,500 inmates at San Quentin. Well, it has only taken three years since the earthquake damaged the Fukushima nuclear power plant north of Tokyo, Japan, to where we're once again seeing devastation that has hit the region this time in the form of a tropical storm, which sent heavy rains and caused epic flooding as well as 80 mile per hour winds. All this rain is now threatening to overwhelm the power plant's drainage system. With 20 inches of rain falling in just 24 hours, the region has been struck a serious blow. Now, floodwaters have caused river levees to be breached, neighborhoods flooded, and even homes knocked right off their foundations. Mm -hmm. Now, while almost 100,000 homes have been evacuated due to meteorologist warnings, helicopters could still not keep up with the need to rescue people stranded on their rooftops. Sure. Uh, well, Georgia police are investigating an attempted double murder from an upper-class Atlanta neighborhood. Yvonne Irving made a frantic 911 call for help as she said her own two sons had attacked her and her husband. Police say Yvonne was able to make the life-saving call due to her husband, Zachary Irving, who was seriously wounded, but able to distract the 17-year-old Cameron and 22-year-old Christopher. Now, neighbors were in shock to see the father badly bleeding in front of the area mansion. And in this area, Catan, a lot of uh, manicured lawns, very upscale place. Sure, kind of makes you wonder what would put it in a child's mind to attack their parents like that. Well, police are also reporting that the gas line had been cut, uh, suspecting the two brothers tried to burn the house down as well. Both are currently in jail facing aggravated assault charges and arson charges as well. Uh, while police are not commenting on a possible motive for the criminal acts, the two brothers are cooperating with police. They're being held without bond. What are the latest moves from Pope Francis? Well, Pope Francis is trying to simplify the annulment process by making it faster, easier, and cheaper for Roman Catholics to obtain marriage annulments. Now, previously, the annulment process has been fairly expensive, costing upwards to $1,000 or more, and not to mention a process that could take a year or even several years to complete. Interesting. Well, the new procedure has a lot less review process involved so that people can get their results quicker and can be more affordable for them. The new measures also give more power to local bishops to handle annulments and make the decision very quickly, which will lessen the appeals made to the Vatican Court. A recent Pew Research poll said two-thirds of Catholics think that Catholics who get divorced and remarried should be welcomed back into full communion with the Church. Now, the current tradition of the Catholic Church says you have to go through an annulment process to come back to the Church in order to partake of the full communion. At Catan, for our viewers, some may wonder, well, what is the difference between a divorce right. and annulment? Well, with a divorce, the, the two actually admit that there was a marriage that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. But with the annulment process, they say that 
the marriage never existed. They don't ever admit that there was a marriage to begin with. So even just kind of just wipe it off the books. Just annul it, nullify it, do oh. away with it. Hmm. But keep in mind, Yeshua Hawkins says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Hmm. That works. Well, 67-year-old Archbishop Joseph Wesolowski, former papal nuncio to the Dominican Republic, has died in his private room in the Vatican City Palazzo. The Archbishop was diffracted for his undeniable crimes of child sex abuse, including victimizing shoeshine boys in Santo Domingo and hoarding 100,000 files with child pornography inside the Vatican City. An autopsy was ordered to confirm his cause of death, which was said to be from natural causes. In a development that caught U.S. intelligence by surprise, Russia has set up an air traffic tower and modular housing units for hundreds of personnel at an airfield near Syrian's Mediterranean port of Latakia. Now, this development means the prospect of U.S. and Russian warplanes war planes fighting on opposite sides in the skies over Syria exists. Hmm. Russia has requested the necessary rights to fly military cargo aircraft in the airfield, while some U.S. intelligence analysts believe Russia is preparing to insert combat aircraft into Syria to conduct airstrikes against rebel forces, threatening the government of its ally, Bashar al-Assad. Other analysis or analysts caution Russia could simply be gathering up for a humanitarian relief operation for the tens of thousands of Syrian civilians forced to flee their homes. At an economic conference, Russia's President Putin said that although he continues to supply the Assad regime with arms, military intervention in Syria is, quote, not yet on our agenda. Now, U.S. officials say they are not putting much stock in President Putin's public statements about Syria. And as one U.S. official said, this type of Russian intervention would be, quote, a game changer. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also chimed in, saying Moscow will continue sending weapons to Syria to help Damascus fight ISIL and other foreign-backed militants. Lavrov is continuing on, or counting, excuse me, on the United States to cooperate with Russia in helping the Syrian government force ISIL terrorists out of the country. Lavrov said Russia is conducting military exercises in the Mediterranean Sea, like what has been done in the past based on international law. The Russian foreign minister insisted that ISIL cannot be defeated by airstrikes alone, stressing the need for ground forces to interact with Syrian troops. Lavrov also expressed support for Syria, saying Moscow will provide military assistance as well as humanitarian aid to Syria. Well, things may not turn out to be as simple as Russians expressing an intention and making the delivery. However, our correspondent Larry McGee has more coverage on the turmoil in the Mideast and at least two nations which have decided to block Russian participation. Larry, what do you have for us? The Greek Foreign Ministry is revealing that it received a request from the American government to block Russian aircraft attempting to deliver much-needed aid to the Syrian government. At the time, Athens reportedly denied the request, and analysts in speaking on the issue say that it is not exactly clear what the American concerns are. The mainstream media is being fingered as a tool of propaganda, but despite their concerted efforts to raise alarms, analysts say no solid accusations have yet to surface. Where Russia is concerned, as explained by President Putin at a recent conference, Russia has many economic and political contracts with Syria, and its intentions now are only geared towards fulfilling those. For example, the equipment and weapons that Russia is delivering now, Syria reportedly bought years ago. In addition to that, it is also sending food aid and medical supplies. But according to the U.S.'s position, any military support to the Assad regime, whether it's in the form of military personnel, aircraft supplies, weapons, or funding is both destabilizing and counterproductive. Analysts and observers appear to find that position a bit confusing, since the Syrian government is the only entity in the region capable of effectively confronting the Islamic State. 
That hasn't stopped sharp criticism coming from Washington, however, as well as veiled threats that the latest move by Russia could produce a confrontation. The Secretary General for NATO, Jen Stoltenberg, has also chimed in and expressed concern, saying that any support for the government of Syria could further escalate conflict in the region. As a result, at least two NATO member states have denied Russia permission to fly over their countries and make their delivery. To fly or not not to fly is not just a concern for Russia and NATO, however. The General Assembly of the UN took a vote this week to decide whether or not to fly the flag of observer states such as Palestine. 119 countries said yes, 45 nations chose to abstain, and eight nations voted no to the move, which is largely being considered symbolic. Outgoing Israeli Ambassador Ron Prosser expressed Israeli contempt for the measure, while his Palestinian counterpart called it an important moment that was about more than just a flag. In later interviews, Palestinian Ambassador Mansour said the measure gives the Palestinian people a glimmer of hope that the international community is still in favor of justice for the Palestinian people, that it is thinking of them and it is not abandoning them, but that it is keeping hope alive. And this, he says, is another effort to defend the two-state solution. There is apparently still no solution, however, yet in sight for the ongoing conflict between Saudi Arabia and Yemen, and Qatar has now entered the conflict, pledging to send 100,000 troops to Yemen ready for battle. The Qatari forces have yet to enter Yemeni's territory, but accompanied by 200 armored vehicles and 30 Apache helicopters armed with missiles, the force is said to have already made it past the province of Hadamar and has been photographed proceeding in columns along the Saudi and Yemeni's border. Saudi Arabia has also contributed close to 4,000 additional troops itself after a retaliatory missile strike by the Yemeni's army, which reportedly killed many recently in one of the provinces of its opposition. The Mideast was the chief topic of conversation between EU foreign policy chief Frederica Mogherini and world leaders in Egypt this week. The Israeli-Palestinian peace process in particular, which the foreign policy chief says is deeply connected to the stability and peace of the Middle East. Mogherini says progress has been made to the extent that the EU has been able to revitalize the work of the quartet in the past few months. And here just recently, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, sent invitation letters to the foreign ministers of the quartet to convene a meeting on the quartet principles in New York in the coming weeks. Of course, the quartet principles are the three requirements laid out by the quartet for the diplomatic recognition of Palestinian statehood. But another interesting point to note is that at the EU's behest, additional invitations were also sent to Egypt, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, and an invitation was also sent to the Secretary General of the Arab League with the hope, the EU chief said, that this restart will lead to improvements on the ground. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan, Jeff, back to you. Well, Katan, it'll be interesting to see what the quartet is able to get done. Time will tell. We continue our ongoing coverage regarding the flood of refugees fleeing Syria, heading towards Europe in hopes of a better life as they attempt to leave the life of war and famine behind them. Now, the Pope is speaking out, calling his church, including monasteries, parishes, and convents, to take in fleeing families. He said recently, in front of the tragedy of tens of thousands of refugees who are fleeing from death, from war and hunger and who are marching towards life's hope, the gospel asks us to be closer to these small and abandoned people. Therefore, I ask parishes, religious communities, monasteries, and sanctuaries all over Europe to express the pragmatism that, that's related to philosophy or, or theories of the gospel and shelter a family of refugees. A concrete action looking forward to the Holy Year, he said. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Israel Hawkins has said that the Pope and the Catholic Church does not have the answers, nor can they teach or bring peace to any of these countries. As a result, European countries, including Germany, are welcoming the refugees with open arms. But many wonder for how long. In Munich, Germany applause and cheers could be heard at a train station as refugees arrived at the train station there, Germany welcoming them with food, clothing and essentials, including baby shoes, even candy. 
Now, one woman, Rua Abdelali, a 20-year-old who traveled two grueling weeks by boat, foot, and train in hopes of joining her father in Germany, uh, who she hasn't seen in six months. She's going to Germany to pursue an education in engineering. As she got off the train, she wasn't sure if the dream uh, would become a reality, that is, of meeting up with her father again until she actually saw his face. And, of course, tears of joy streamed down her face, that being because their family was finally reunited again. Now, this relief may be short-lived with so many coming. Austria said it may soon remove the emergency measures it enacted to receive these refugees, and Germany said it, too, may be reaching its limits. Hundreds of frustrated Syrians busted through the barriers in Hungary, tired of how that country has handled the refugee crisis. Just as quick as the European countries were to take in the refugees, now leaders of those countries are arguing. Some countries are rounding them up, others are shutting their borders, and while places like Germany are welcoming them in. The Eastern European countries are more hesitant to welcome the refugees in. Hungary, in particular, has about 50,000 migrants in the country, and the police are trying to take control of them by rounding them up. Now, the government treated this more like an invasion than a migration of desperate people. Camps there are currently full, so many families are just being left outside, but of course under guard as well. One Syrian refugee said the treatment was humiliating and unnecessary, and they, referring to the refugees, weren't being violent. He said, there isn't one person here who hasn't lost a relative. Why don't they treat us with more dignity? European leaders proposed a controversial solution, resettlement quotas. Germany would take in 40,000, France 24,000, and the UK the most reluctant at only 20,000. Well, right now there are millions from Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan that want to leave their war zone. Well, in our final report at Germany's Frankfurt International Airport, friends and families anxiously wait the arrival of a group of Assyrian Christians who are abducted and taken captive by ISIS. Their release after church groups came together and paid their ransom. The men, were, the men who were released uh, met their families at the airport and said, It's a great feeling to be free and to see our families again. We're so grateful to those who helped to secure our release. In an interview with RT's Peter Oliver, the men said, we've lost everything that we had at home. Our whole community's gone. I don't think any of us will ever go back to Syria. What we've gone through, it would be impossible. When asked if they ever gave up hope, the men said, there were times we prayed that they would shoot us and that they would not behead us. Mm. And in regards to what they think about being in Germany, the men said, we're we're rather conflicted. Of course, we're grateful for the West for giving us shelter, but we wouldn't need that shelter if it hadn't been for Western involvement in our homeland. So if every country would have just kind of minded their own business and tended to their own affairs, they wouldn't be in the situation that's brought them this sorrow to begin with. Absolutely. Wow. Well, times of darkness are growing darker day by day. War, famine, unnatural disasters, sickness and disease, and people looking for peace at the source of deception that sits on seven hills. Well, Yeshua Hawkins of the House of Yahweh has been exposing what the Holy Scriptures calls a beast that's more subtle than any beast of the field, and showing their darkness and evil wickedness that has and is leading mankind to all-out destruction. There is hope. For those of you who want a better life without the sorrows that we've seen in this broadcast today, find out the solution to true peace, joy, health, and abundant living by contacting the House of Yahweh and request your free copy of the monthly newsletter and Prophetic Word magazine. Here's what you can do. Well, to contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yeshawhawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. You can also check out our new website, www.ypnnews.com. And to email the House of Yahweh, 
send your emails to info at yahweh.com. And for any calls outside the United States, please call the number on your screen. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next, Yisrael Hawkins, the only source of light in this world of darkness. For all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.